Stand by, everybody. Yeah. Charlie, you haven't got your hammer, mate. Where's your hammer? Somebody find him his bleeding hammer. Yeah. Okay. And action. The thing was, when Leonard died, there was nobody I could discuss the old films with. Yeah, we'd meet sometimes twice a week and talk about nothing else. Any question he couldn't answer, I could and vice versa. Of course, we each had our own special loves. We couldn't, for example, ever catch Leonard out on the life of Lana Turner. <laughs> Whereas I was always rock solid on Betty, Joan and, well, of course, Barbara. <laughs> Now, I can honestly claim that my knowledge of Betty Davis is encyclopedic. I could go on mastermind tomorrow with that as my special subject. <laughs> there were others, of course, Judy, Rita, Ginger and the like, but, but they were all musical. What Leonard and I specialised in were the lives of the great screen goddesses. <laughs> I know we're talking about the 50s here, but... <laughs> Even today, I'm still picking stuff up. Did you know that way back then, Marilyn was having a little fling with Marlena? Hmm. Heard that only last week. Yet yeah, perhaps you're wondering where we are. Now, this is my Betty room. Joan is next door. She's having a facelift. So, with Leonard gone, it left a real gap. That was why I placed the ad on Twitter. We'd never done anything like it before, but never any need. Mind you, when it came to the wording, I did take the greatest care, but you'd never know with this sort of thing. It could so easily be misinterpreted. Yet what I said was, Roland, well, that's my name, by the way, age 73, seeks fellow film buff. Special area of interest, Hollywood in the 30s, 40s and 50s. Three days later, I had a reply from someone calling himself Dexter. Though they suggested he might be American, he was in fact from Lyme Regis. We arranged to meet in London at a Starbucks near Piccadilly Circus. As a gesture, I took with me this beautiful coffee table book I happened to have two of, Glamour Queens of Hollywood. All the way there, I kept saying to myself, Roland, don't expect the earth, because you'll only be disappointed. Because we can't all be in love with Betty and Joan, can we? You might have a thing for Susan, or even, let's face it, Ava. Be flexible. Despite my saying this, nothing could have prepared me for the man I met that afternoon. The most striking item of his appearance was what he wore on his head. I think they call it a Stetson. Seeing me stare at it open mouthed, he apologised for not meeting me fully dressed. His pair of pearl-handled revolvers that completed the ensemble he'd had to leave at home. As I sat there, stirring my flat wide, he talked non-stop. I just listened. <laughs> All the time I was hoping for the briefest mention of my own idols, Betty and Joan, but no, <laughs> the man was obsessed. No other word for it, obsessed with, of all people, John Wayne. I remembered the book, Glamour Queens of Hollywood, still lying at the bottom of my bag, and decided to leave it where it was. Now, all the time, I wanted to ask, why him? If he'd chosen Rock Hudson, I might have understood, or even Marlon in his younger days. I didn't get the chance because of what happened next. Beggar belief. Yet from out of his bag, with a gleam in his eye, he produced this box. 
he explained that recently he'd attended an auction of Wayne memorabilia. He removed the lid and the tissue paper, and as he tilted it towards me, he said, These are the actual spurs worn by the Duke in the film True Grit. Then he asked me, would I like to handle them? Although it was the last thing I wanted, I said I wouldn't mind. At which point he pushed towards me a pair of white gloves and asked me to put them on. So there was I in the middle of Starbucks Piccadilly, white gloved, holding up these evil looking pieces of clanking metal and Dexter pointing out their best features. Now, all the time I'm thinking, well, he's not the only one with his memorabilia, is he? What about my cigarette lighter? All right, it may be like all those bits of the true cross, but that man at the car boot sale did swear blind on the Bible it was genuine. The Zippo lighter used by Paul Heinrich in Now Voyager to light the two cigarettes. You recall the moment Betty saying, Oh, Jerry, let's not ask for the moon, we have the stars. With that sitting on my mantelpiece, who needs John Wayne's fucking spurs? Of course, I didn't say that. I hurt the man's feelings. Instead, I tried, without overdoing it, to express my approval. Perhaps he thought he'd made a convert, because again, fishing in his bag, he presented me with this DVD of Tall in the Saddle, the director's cut. It contained, he assured me, all the deleted scenes. Having decided not to present him with Grammar Queens of Hollywood, I now changed my mind. After all, wasn't I there to defend the honour of Betty and Joan? Even if he dropped it in the nearest litter bin, a statement had to be made. I wasn't quite sure what that was, but even so. I watched him as he flicked through it, nodding his approval, and then dropped it in his bag. After that, we... Finished our coffees, I walked him to the tube, and well, that was it. Betty and Joan had met the Duke. It was, you might say, a brief encounter.